Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu and its application. Chris, can you please come in? Today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the idea of not using pain compliance. So, once again, you should watch the last episode. Chris will put the link below, or this probably won't make much sense to you. Because in the last episode with Chris throwing a swing, I talked about how if he's pushing through right now and he's too strong for me, instead of redirecting or jamming the force, which I showed in the last episode, another option you can do is turn off his strength by hitting some of the nerves in his arm, whereas now his arm doesn't really work for us. I didn't hit him hard, it's just the, the yes. way. Yeah. And then on the other side, it's the same thing. If he pushes through, he can hit the arm. Right? But after we received some emails after that episode, um, people are starting to look at this as some kind of finishing move, right? Like a Chris swing it in. And I'm going to hit this guy's arm really hard. You might be able to hit really hard, you might not. But even if you can, I don't think that's a good tactic because when your mind commits like that, you're really relying on pain compliance. Opinion guys are. The fact is, that the guy has adrenaline enough and he's pissed off. A lot of people, you can hurt him as hurt his limbs as much as you want. They do. They will just keep fighting. Right? So I don't believe in the idea of um, relying on pain. So every time you practice techniques like that, instead of thinking of it like pain compliance, you should think of it like you're is on the way by. So you're either hitting something on the way in, or you're hitting something on the way out. In either case, you're not really committing to the limb. So if Chris hits, like there, when I hit Chris's limb, it's on the way towards his throat. I'm not committing to this, right? Because you never know. If he hits like that and he pushes through, when I hit this, he might block this one, right? Or when I'm hitting this, he might just hit me. And then I have to deal with the hit. Same thing on the other side. This might not hurt him. And then he might hit it again, right? Or this might not hurt him, he might hit me another way. And I have, have to be ready to deal with it. So you should not commit. It. <laughs> it has to be on the way in towards the meaningful target. Or on the way out, if he punches. Right? If he's ready, for sure. <laughs> on the way out, you might hit the limb, right? You might hit the limb on the way out. <laughs> okay. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about that. Because it's right in the third movement, I mean the third floor movement that we talked about last time. Thanks, Chris. All right, guys. So the concept today is really simple. When you're doing a limb hitting technique, in this case, we're working on, from a third form, this movement, the ginger fist, going to a top sum in the form. It goes one, two, and three, and then hoons out, right? The idea is when you hit a limb, it's on the way in or on the way out. So you can do that with any technique. It doesn't even have to be Wing Chun, but I'm using this technique from the third form as an example. So in the form, it goes from here, and it goes directly to the center line with the talk cell and the hoon cell. This is very important. You don't want to commit, like we were talking about earlier when I demonstrated on Chris. Instead, it's on the way in or on the way out of your primary attack. Therefore, you stop it on the center line in the form, and you go, in this case, a talk cell, right? But you can also rip that apart of the form as an isolation and work on it by yourself, where you don't even have to do the first part, just as an isolated exercise. After this arm hitting, it doesn't even have to be arm hitting. There's many, many ways to use the junior fist. Maybe on a different episode I'll talk about it. It can be used for takedown, it can be used as a choke, it can be used as a limb destruction, it can be used to hit the body, hitting the head, using it as part of a trap, using it as a wrapping device, using it as a changing of angles. So maybe on a different episode I'll talk about it. But in today's example, uh, as a limb destruction, from here, you shouldn't go past your center. So when you're not doing the form and you're doing an isolated exercise, you can actually do it from here and then throw a finger jab. Do it from here, throw a palm strike. Do it from here, practice throwing a punch. So you blend your arm hitting technique into a hit. Much like in a chunky form, after the arm break, we go directly into a hit, right? That's a very important concept. So even if you don't do Wing Chun, or if you're doing some kind of arm hitting or joint dislocating technique, you should practice it in such a way that you release it right away and spring load it, springboard it off into a primary target attack right away, either on the way in or on the way out. Just by looking at all the techniques and programming that into all these different arm hitting techniques, you'll notice your skill will increase right away, like within a month, right? So if you're interested in this kind of work, please go to adamchankofu.com. As an announcement, level three will be released in the next month and a half, around a month. 
or even two months, we don't know. That depends on Chris, they're doing a lot of computer work for it. And also the full immersion program right now is available on the website. See you later.